You caught me. You caught me dusting the rabbit off of my shirt. David Hopperfield is running around here and I got rabbit fuzz all over me. Don't judge me that this is the same shirt I had on yesterday. <laughs> right before I shot the video yesterday, um, I grabbed one of these shirts. It's not what I wore to the shop, but listen, this, this is a side note. I've been working really hard for a year at uh, trimming my belly down. Anyway, I've never been able to wear our Magic Shop t-shirts because the medium was too small, but the large was too large. So yesterday, <laughs> of course I'm wearing it again today. All right, this is what I have to tell you. The first magic trick that I ever saw when I was four years old, many of you have heard this story. My grandfather, he was not a magician, but he showed me the vanishing coin in glass. And it came in a box that looked like this. How many of you remember these easy magic? Look how yellow these are. These are original. They don't make them like this anymore. Even the, even the most recent ones made were years ago, but they stopped doing this packaging. But these two happen to be really old. This one is almost as old, but this is all vintage. Vintage easy magic. But check this out. I was just walking through the shop and you, I, I know I sound like a broken record. These are not lies. This happens to me constantly. I see stuff that I haven't noticed before or we've forgotten about. So I, look, I walk through and I see, this is all that's left by the way. Well, I'm keeping this one. You can't have this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. I'm keeping this one. So anyway, these are packaged, uh, original, new in the, in the old boxes, which I actually asked them at Robbins recently. I said, do you guys still have this stuff? They's like, no. He said, sometimes we'll find some in the back. He said, if we find something that comes in those boxes, you want me to call you? I said, of course, because I want these easy magic boxes. But anyway, here is steel ball and tube with, look at this, with the manual. It's got, this is not just the instructions. This comes with instructions, but this is a whole book of ideas, different magic to do with, with the steel ball and tube. Check this out, brain explosion, all right? If you're not familiar with the trick, this is a classic. You have a, a little steel tube, okay? And you have a steel ball bearing. I don't know if you can see on camera, but the ball bearing is wider than the tube. I mean, obviously it wouldn't, it wouldn't sit there. Uh, it's not a tapered tube. Look, I can turn it over. It's, the ball is wider than the tube. And you, you can look through it, all right? This is a great trick. This is a great pocket trick. If you know it already, you may have forgotten how great it is. Now watch this. If you concentrate on it and you warm it up, do you see it? Do you see it happen? I hope that the camera does it justice. The sides are melting in. The ball is becoming, there it goes. The ball is becoming soft. And it goes all the way into the tube. Like this. Now watch, this is what's great. You can cut, all I'm doing is rotate. I'm just, I'm not doing any funny business. I'm just squeezing or not uh, spinning. That's the word I'm looking for. Spinning this back and forth. It comes all the way back to the top and becomes solid. Now, if you've done this before, you know it is quite possible then to hand it out to the audience. But I'm looking at this early, and you know I do gospel magic. I'm looking at this earlier. I'm walking past it, and I said, wait a minute. Mark 10, 25. It is harder for a rich man to get into the kingdom of God than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Think about this. you got this little bitty hole. This is like the eye of the needle. This is the camel. Now, in Old Testament times, people were traveling by camel. <clears throat> so there were places where they would come to a pass in a wall or like a little, uh, not a cave, but there would be a, a, an area with a hole and the camel, he couldn't walk through it. And he had all this packing on his back. He had all these burdens, the luggage and the cargo that he was carrying on the trip, all the suitcases. <laughs> And so they would call these little holes that were hard for the camel to get through, they would call them a needle's eye because he couldn't hardly get through it. Now, it was not that he absolutely couldn't. They would unpack him, but then he had to get down on the ground, which is very hard for a camel, and the camel would have to army crawl. You know how hard that is for a camel? 
almost impossible. And so this was a common phrase about a camel trying to go through the eye of a needle. And so Jesus, in sharing the way of salvation, he said, you know how hard it is for these camels to get through the eye of the needle when we're traveling? You know how hard it is for these camels to unpack all of their burdens, all of their cargo, and then they have to get down on the ground, they have to get on their knees, and they have to scoot through. It's not like a camel is used to walking tall. A camel is used to being proud and walking right through anywhere he wants to go and being able to carry all of his stuff. Jesus says that it's harder for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven than it is for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. Do you know what this means? This means it's not impossible for a prideful rich person to go to heaven, but it means that so many times our, our focus is wrapped up in ourselves, that we walk tall, that we walk proud, that we're carrying all of our own stuff. We don't need anybody's help and we can walk wherever we want to go through. But that's not how it works with salvation. With salvation, we have to unpack all the things that we put our faith in, all the things that we had our pride in, all of my gold, all of my silver, all of my accomplishments, all of my walking tall. I have to unpack it and I have to get down low. I have to humble myself in order to go through the way of salvation. You know why? Because just like the eye of a needle was a little passage, the Bible says that wide is the gate that leads to destruction, but narrow, are you seeing the connections? You gotta let scripture interpret scripture. You can't read the Bible, you gotta read the Bible. And so you put all of this together. It's the narrow way of salvation. That's what Jesus meant. He says it's harder for a rich person to let go of their pride and unpack their stuff and humble their self to go through the narrow way than it is for a literal camel to unpack literal stuff and get down on his knees and go through the narrow way. Isn't that, that's amazing. That's Mark 10, 25. It's also in Luke and maybe some of the other gospels. What's my point? My point is I'm walking past this old magic trick and a little still small voice whispers in my ear and said, it's harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. But you got to know the next verse. Because the next verse says, With men it may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. Gospel magicians, FCM guys, Sunday school teachers, you know how simple this is. Get one of these. You probably already got one but you might not have them with a cool vintage easy magic box or the book. But anyway, get one of these and talk about the impossibility of the steel ball bearing making it through the little hole that is smaller than the ball bearing. And talk about how it's impossible. With men, it's impossible, but with the magician, okay, with a higher power, with miraculous power, all things are possible. And so there's your scriptures to use, Mark 10, 25, and 26. But look, I've got seven of these with the book. They are on the website right now. Steel, look up steel ball tube or steel tube. Look it up with those keywords. You will find these packaged sets for $14.95. You get the original steel ball and tube in the vintage packaging and you get the book. This tells you all kinds of different tricks to use. And in the meantime, you guys might want to know, look, this one, it's old. This was $2.50 then. Look at this old brown label. Five routines with rubber eggs. Includes three rubber eggs. You have to see this. If you don't have time, you don't have to stay on here. The main part's over, but some of you might like to see this. Look at this old yellow Robin's instruction. Look at this rubber egg. Let's open it, shall we? <laughs> it is old. It is so old. I mean, I guess it was squeezy at one time. It seems more like a foam egg. It says made in Japan. But anyway, there's that one. It said includes three. There's two. I don't know how the third one would have fit. These, are, these take up the space. But anyway, original new in package and old. There's that. Let's see what this is. A Robbins pecan. That is Steve Bender's handwriting. 
This box was not printed with the name of the trick. Steve Bender wrote that, I can tell. All right, so this is a plastic version of the pecan. Oh, I just dropped the 1979 pea popcorn and navy bean. There they are. Actually, I don't know. I think maybe Robbins was slipping in some rocks. Tell Robbins was scamming all of us with pebbles. I don't know what these are, but anyway, there's some kind of little bean. I guess they could have dried out that much. But I'm just enjoying my old easy magic boxes and the voice of the Holy Spirit here at Ickle Pickle Magic. And so, uh, yeah, that's all for today. But these are on now. Only a few left. And uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. So thanks for spending a few minutes with me.